Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BB3D channel we'll learn how to install ferrules on the connections going to the Ender 3 series mainboard. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to try to improve the safety of this Ender 3 V2 3D printer. But first, let's talk about wires for a minute. There are two kinds of wires, solid core and stranded core. Solid core wires are exactly what they sound like. A single solid metal core, and they're stiff and hard to bend. Stranded core wires are made of lots and lots of thin strands of wire, and this is the kind of wire commonly used in, well, a lot of electronics, including 3D printers, because it's flexible, so it's easier to work with in tight areas. And connecting things with stranded wires seems easy enough. Just strip a bit of insulation from the end, twist the strands together, and you're ready to make a connection. But the ends of stranded wires can sometimes fray when they're inserted into connectors like these terminal blocks. And frayed wire ends can cause short circuits if the stray bits of wire contact something they shouldn't. Now a lot of 3D printer manufacturers, reality included, like to tin the ends of the wires that go into the screw terminal blocks on the printer's main board. Most likely because it's quick to do and it keeps the strands of wire altogether, making it faster to assemble the main board into the printer on the production line. The Ender 3 V2 is no exception and you'll get to see what I'm talking about in just a bit. Tinning stranded wires like this isn't a problem on its own, and in fact makes it easy to insert the wires into a circuit board and solder them into place. But tinning is a problem when the tinned ends are inserted into a terminal block and then clamped down. That clamping action compresses the solder and wire conglomeration, deforming it. Then, as the wire and solder heat up and expand during use, they deform even more. When they cool down and shrink, they're ever so slightly looser in the terminal block. Now, instead of a good electrical connection, there's a weaker one with higher electrical resistance, and higher resistance leads to more heat, and more heat leads to more expansion and more deformation, and then cooling and shrinking leaves the connection even looser, and this cycle repeats over and over again and can eventually lead to this, a fried connection. This is from one of my Monoprice Maker Select Plus printers, and it has cooked parts of the mainboard and melted the plastic connector. So to try to prevent this horrible fate from befalling this printer, I'm going to use a connector that crimps onto the end of the stranded wire. Like tinning the ends of the wire, it keeps the strands all in one place, but unlike tinning, it won't be deformed when it's clamped into a terminal block. And that, hopefully, avoids the whole cycle that causes connectors to overheat, melt, and burn. So what can we use instead of tinned wires? We can use these, wire ferrules, and this, a ferrule crimping tool. Now that's ferrule, not ferrule. This one at least is not wild and untamed. The tool actually came with the kit, which is pretty nice. And using the tool is pretty simple. You strip the insulation from the ends of a wire, twist the strands together, insert the strands into an appropriately sized ferrule, and crimp it. Now this is a ratcheting crimp tool, so you have to squeeze it past a certain point to get it to let go, and that generally results in a good tight crimp. Before we really get going on this, I want to mention that you are performing this operation at your own risk. If you aren't comfortable working on the wiring of a 3D printer, enlist the help of a friend who is. If you decide not to install ferrules, at least consider accessing your printer's mainboard and tightening those terminal block screws on a regular basis. Okay, the wires that most need ferrules are the ones that carry a lot of current. Now the fans don't use much current at all, so those can be left as is. But the wires coming from the power supply and the ones going out to the heated bed and the heater cartridge for the nozzle, those definitely need ferrules. So here's the plan. For each pair of wires, power supply, bed heater, and nozzle heater cartridge, I'm going to loosen the screws on the terminal block and remove the wires. With the power supply wires, I need to keep track of which one is positive and which one is negative. I'm going to clip the tinned ends off the wires, strip about 15 millimeters of insulation off of them, and crimp the ferrules onto them. And then I'll put them back into the terminal blocks, tighten the screws, and make sure that the connectors are secure. Ready? Okay. Now first, let's turn off the printer and unplug it. 
We've got to get into the electronics enclosure, so remove this screw on top and then these three on the bottom. Okay, we're in. Just a word of warning, the space in here can get a little tight, so take your time and you'll do fine. Also, you may end up having to snip zip ties to set some of the wires free. Let's work on the power supply wires. The black wire, negative, is closer to the corner, and we'll need to remember that when we reconnect them after we've crimped the ferrules. Of the three pair of wires we're working on today, this is the only pair that we have to make sure to put the positive and negative wires back where we got them. The bed and heater cartridge aren't polarized, so they don't care. So let's loosen the screws on the terminal block. Note that these are captive screws. They're not supposed to come out. You turn them in the loosened direction to loosen the clamping mechanism inside the block, and then pull the wires out. Now that we've got the power supply wires out, I can show you what the tinned wire looks like. You can see how it's compressed from being screwed down into that terminal block. And now that you've seen that, we can snip off the tinned ends and dispose of them. Then strip some insulation from each one of them and twist the strands together. The length of the exposed wire needs to be enough to get just about to the end of the metal tube in the ferrule. The ferrule size that I want to use has the black plastic on it. I chose it because it's just big enough for the twisted wire strands to go into. I'll insert the wire into the ferrule and verify that the strands are just about reaching the end of the tube here. Then I'll insert the ferrule into the tool and squeeze the handle to compress it. And this takes a good hard squeeze. And there, I have a ferrule crimped onto the end of the wire. I'll give it a tug to make sure that it's not going to come off the wire. It wouldn't be good if the wire came out of the ferrule. If you can pull it out, get another ferrule and crimp it again and make sure to get it tight. I'll do the red wire next. It's the exact same process. Put the wire in the ferrule and crimp it down. With both of the power supply wires done, I can insert them into the terminal block. Now remember the black one goes toward the corner of the board and tighten the screws to secure them. And then I'll repeat that for the bed wires and the heater cartridge wires. I recommend working on one pair of wires at a time. Now remember, for the best chance of success, choose ferrules that are just big enough for the bare twisted wires to fit into. For instance, the wires for the heater cartridge are thinner than the other ones, so they need a smaller ferrule. Give them a tug test when you're done and recrimp if necessary. Once the ferrules are crimped on and the wires are back in the terminal blocks, replace any zip ties that you had to cut so that you can keep things neat and tidy in the electronics enclosure. Then put the cover back on the enclosure three screws on the bottom with the long screw at the back, and one screw on the top. Plug it in, turn it on, and confirm that it still works. And yay, we've got lights and fans, so the incoming power supply wires are working, and I can preheat the nozzle in bed for PLA, so the bed and the heater cartridge wires are working too. So now that I have ferrules on the wires that are dealing with the most electrical current, I'm pretty confident that this printer is less likely to suffer from an overheated connector, and that makes me happy. I should go through the rest of my printers and do this to them, too. Crimping ferrules onto the wires really isn't difficult to do. In an assembly line environment after stripping the wire, tinning them probably only takes a second, and crimping a ferrule takes maybe two or three seconds. And given how much the tinned wires get compressed in the terminal blocks, I think it's likely that the problem would have cropped up eventually, just like it did on my Monoprice Maker Select Plus. So the very few extra seconds that it would take on the assembly line to crimp ferrules onto the wires seems like a no-brainer, and I really wish that all the 3D printer manufacturers that don't do it would. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode, and now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.